This week's episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod is brought to you by Honey Love. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. Get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link, honeylove.com slash wizards. Support our show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash wizards. You know, February is not only my birthday month, but also the month of love. Whenever I feel support, I feel love. And there's nothing better than a supportive and comfortable bra that you love. Honey Love makes way more than just bras. They'll keep you comfortable and looking great with shapewear, tanks, and leggings to support your style and body throughout the day. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash wizards. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off, honeylove.com slash wizards. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. Hey, everybody, we love visiting with you and we love you being with us. And if you follow us, then you're going to get more. Where should they follow us, Jen? Well, Apple, Spotify, basically anywhere you listen to your podcast. It will really help out the show and help us bring you more episodes you enjoy, like this one. Hey, everybody, (laughs) welcome to another episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod with Jen Stone and David DeLuise. For all the Germans out there. Hello? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I gotta, I'm doing the podcast right now. Gosh. The, okay, the phone gag. By. The phone gag, I swear. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the last episode. Art Museum piece, season one, episodes 21. It's is the so, last episode of the first it's season. It's so crazy. We did 22 now. Uh, everybody, this, we had not aired yet. Mm-hmm. We had not been on the entire television. entire first season, yeah. The entire 22 episodes. 21. And we had, 21 episodes and we have not you know shown on yeah. tv yet which yeah. is so interesting so it was like this beautiful like insular experience where it was just ours for a long time yeah which was really special so this episode first aired on august 31st first august 31st it's a good thing i can speak on a podcast um 2008 written by our awesome writing duo ben montano and vince chung ben and Vinny, who we love who so much. later took over uh, uh, as the head yeah. uh, showrunners yeah, in the fourth Peter season. Um, okay, so overview of this episode, when Alex decides to take a shortcut on her art history assignment, she brings the historical masterpieces to life in order to answer questions on Justin's assigned worksheet correctly. Meanwhile, Max and Jerry play football in the house using a spell which uh, spreads to Teresa. So at the start of the episode, Alex is cleaning up outside the substation when Harper gives her a necklace, which she mistakes as trash. Uh, and Alex also tries to get out of wearing it when she discovers it's a gift. Which is not a very good friend thing to do. Yeah, but Alex was very clear on her style, and, and that clashed for sure. It right. would clash with anybody's style. Um, and also, too, I think, you know, the politeness kind of goes out the window a little bit when you've been friends since kids, like Alex and Harper have right, been. Right, right. Um, not that you can't still be nice, but I think the sort of like the niceties. You can be genuine. You can be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. The niceties and like the social graces kind of fall away because you've known each other for so long. Um, but she tries to get out of wearing it by convincing Harper to sell her homemade jewelry on Waverly Place that weekend. Then back at the sub shop, Jerry catches the kids taking Babe Ruth out of a picture frame and into real life. They return him to his frame with the spell pictures of faces return to your places with the place and date of the picture. Pictures and places return to your places, 1971 <laughs> something. Um, did the Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth guy, did he talk at all? Or mm-hmm. was he just, uh, he Yeah, he talked talk. a lot. Okay. Yeah, and he was like painted black and white. Yeah, he was black and white. Like he was like gray and because that was came the out of the picture yeah, that way. he right? came out of the black and white picture. I, I uh, blanked out at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, so weird to really, it's so bizarre to watch something. Mm-hmm. that you're doing yes. and you don't know what you're going to be doing. You know, now this is interesting. I was at Trader Joe's mm-hmm. and there was a kid there who was a fan. He was like, Oh my God, this and the podcast with Jennifer. It's so great. And I said, you know, it's just so weird to watch yourself yeah. from a time where you don't like home movies when you're yeah. a kid. And he looked at me like you'd blank. Got a third eye. He doesn't have home movies. His generation. Oh, that's didn't true. It's have, everything's on the phone. Yeah, everything's on the phone. You don't sit down with your family like we yeah. used to and watch home movies. Yeah, my dad to this day, he records every Christmas. He has a camcorder still. What? Still? Yeah, to this day, every Christmas, he charges the thing. And then he gets mad because he's like, it's not working. I'm like, because it's a 
400 years old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so of course, the fact that it is still working is amazing. But um, but yeah, he wants to record everybody opening presents, and then we watch it the next Christmas. Oh so my! So that's like God. a weird like family tradition we still have. Yeah. And it's not really us. It's my dad just perpetuating this because he, you know, he likes the idea of home movies. We don't watch old family movies anymore other than you. We just watch what we recorded recently. Or Or what most people do is they record videos on their phone and then they never watch them again. Yeah. You know what? You know, I feel Um, like that's a big thing. I'm going to do a test with you, Jen Stone. How Uh many photos do you think I have on my phone or in the iCloud, as they say? 20,000. 64,822. What? <laughs> Holy crap. And how many um, videos do you think I have? 5,000. Is it exactly 5,000? Were you looking at my phone? No. All right, that's creepy. But yes, it's 5,000. Re- on the nose? No, it's like 5,003. Like okay. You're very close. I, I never win at those guessing things. Like the, the guess how many like jelly beans are in the jar, I always fucked up and like overshot it. It happens. So I'm really excited that's a, I actually that's got a, that. That's a, um, There's a way to do that, though. What? To count how many jelly beans are in a jar. Is or one of those types of things. Have to be like like a, a you have to be like a Rain Man kind of thing. No, I think there's, that, like a, no? there's like an approach to it. It's like solving a Rubik's Cube. It's something like that, which uh, I can't do either. So cool story, Jen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so they're talking to Babe Ruth. They return him to his uh, frame. Right. Um, the week, this week's wizard's lesson teaches the kids how to make an object pass through something solid with the spell go through, mow through. This was an interesting episode to me because, like I said, we had this picture frame spell right. that wasn't the lesson. Go through, mow through was the lesson. Right. So it was one of those episodes where we started to compound spells and bring right. them all back together. They were like, the um, so let's like do two spells. We had in three. Like one, let's do like three spells in like one episode. Because we're pulling them out of the frames, putting them back, and then go through, mow through. Right. Um, so Jerry like demonstrates this by putting a hockey stick through Max. And he giggles and I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you do when you it have a hockey funny. stick through No, you? but I, I, I liked that because the sensation – Mm-hmm. was uh, um it, it it felt good that he was giggling you god, know that um, god willing <laughs> <laughs> um anyway god, i literally live in the gutter and the er has not helped so at school one of alex's teachers is de- desperate for alex to sign up for an art field trip who is do you remember her name the actress i know i meant to look it up and i totally uh, forgot because mm-hmm. it was one of the last ones when i was putting all my like notes together yeah my yeah type a self um she- I, she uh, she she is someone who's done a lot no, of she has. work. And, she has. And, She's a great character actress, and I'm so sorry that that we did and not she do was her the, homework. The art teacher, yeah. Yes, she's the art teacher. And basically, so this field trip to the art museum counts for like 30% of her grade. And she's so desperate for Alex to pass because if she doesn't pass, this art teacher doesn't get to go on summer vacation because she's stuck in summer school with Alex. Right. So she's like, please, God, <laughs> yeah. please finish it, please. <laughs> so desperate to do it. Um, I know. I'm going to have to, I'm going to look it up. I'm, I know all of you guys are IMDBing right now. And then meanwhile, so she assigns Justin to make sure she goes on the trip. Justin's role is constantly making sure Alex does something. Yeah, isn't that funny? Right? Who? Which out of your brothers, who was the one that was like responsible that kept everybody together? Well, I mean, let's go to Halloween. And okay. uh, Peter, my oldest brother, would, would uh, get candy. Michael would get candy. I would get candy. I would eat it that night. Peter would eat it over a week. And then Michael would save it like for a year. I mean, it like the candy just, he would just yeah. always, he, I don't know if he would hoard it or he just was rationing himself. This reminds me of, have you seen the marshmallow test? Is this where you stick marshmallows in your mouth and you, how many you no. can put in there? <laughs> no, that's, that's not fuzzy bunny, but that's um, chubby bunny. Chubby bunny. So the, the marshmallow test is basically where you leave uh, a kid in a room. Oh, it was a fascinating t- uh, experiment actually. So what they did was they left these kids in a room with a marshmallow. Right. And they said, if you haven't eaten it by the time you get back, I get back, you get two marshmallows. And there, were, it was split. There were some kids that could wait, no problem. And then there were some kids that couldn't. And then they followed up with them 10 years later. And the ones that had the discipline to wait for the second marshmallow were exponentially more successful in their uh-huh. life than the people that needed the immediate gratification. Which I find so interesting, especially in the world we live in now, where it's all about immediate gratification. Right. I uh, just thought about a marshmallow and I ate it in my mind. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> You're like, I was tuning you out entirely during that whole spiel and just I, mentally eating a marshmallow. 
I love who are they, you know, but, but the, the people who did that 10 years later, they did a, so they did that 10 years ago. No, this was a while. This was a long long time ago. I learned, I learned about this, uh, in my psychology class when I was still, so this was in my early twenties and this was an old experiment even then. So patience is a virtue. Absolutely. Cause it just, it's a, it's a testament to people that are able to accomplish more because they have delayed gratification and discipline. Although I wouldn't say my, my brother did succeed in his, uh, in his chosen profession and and, and in other things, but. Well, there's, um, but also he picked a profession where there's a lot of variables outside of your control and discipline. You know? uh, Yeah. The entertainment industry is not just, Oh, you have to be disciplined and work hard. That's a part of it, a big part of it. But it's funny that you say the out of your control because my brother did something that was so great. It was back in the day, long time ago. And, you know, when you would go into an audition, they would videotape you, mm-hmm. you know. And Michael went in and, and did an audition. And then uh, they taped him and, yeah. and they said, uh, we want him to come back and, and do it. They want, you know, to do yeah, it again. He got a call back, yeah. No, no, I mean, this was, they already met with the producers. It was the end go, okay. you know. And Michael said, well, what's the note? What, what do they want? Yeah, what do you and want they're like, change? no note. So Michael was said to his agent, you call them back and he want Michael wanted to be on the call. Mm-hmm. And then the agent said, uh, Michael's not going to come in, but what he said is to, to watch his audition. Oh no, not, 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 I ruined it, but Michael to watch was, the tape. Yes. Here's, yeah. here's what Michael wants you to do. Put the tape in the VCR, press rewind yeah. and then press play. They wanted it live and he'd already done the exact same thing. No, no, no. They were, they were live. I mean. No, I, they wanted it again live. Is that why they asked him to come back? Michael didn't know why they wanted him to come back. Mm-hmm. He said, why do you want me to yes. give me the note? And then they were like, we don't have any notes. That's and what then, I'm saying is they just wanted him to come back and do it live again. Right. And for he probably said, one or two people that were And he said, fuck you, I'm there. not doing it. Just so press rewind. Because frustrating about like, the audition process, or at least you know the way it was, was that if one or two people couldn't make it because they had a meeting or whatever, they just call you back again on a different day mm. and your whole day would go to this freaking audition or yeah, at least half your day being right. stuck in traffic, driving there, parking, walking across the whatever, waiting, performing the same thing you've done 10 times at that point if you're at the end, just for one or two people that couldn't make the time to be there the first time. And that's right. where, like, I agree. Just watch the fucking I, I loved that he, and that's- No, the, that's I think the, that's great. That's the control that he had. He was like, I'm not, I've given you yeah. what you wanted. And now you either, but now, you got the job, by the now way. Now I have to say, which that's good. I'm glad that you said that is like he advocated for himself and still got the job. Right. Cause sometimes people are just like, okay, fuck you. But, yeah. but nowadays it's only the tape. And so it's hard to gauge as an actor. I was talking to some of my friends about this. It's hard to gauge how you're doing because you used to be able to be like, okay, well, I've gotten a callback. And if I'm getting callbacks, that means I'm doing something right. But now it's like you might get a callback and then you don't know about it. This week's episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod is brought to you by Honey Love. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. Get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link, honeylove.com slash wizards. Support our show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash wizards. You know, February is not only my birthday month, but also the month of love. Whenever I feel support, I feel love. And there's nothing better than a supportive and comfortable bra that you love. I'm typically the kind of girl who'd rather wear no bra or a sports bra. Whenever I wear a traditional bra, I mean, I swear, I'm just taking that sucker off the moment I get home. Honey Love is the kind of bra you want to keep on, whether you're at home or running around. With Honey Love, I don't have to choose between comfort and sex appeal. The Silhouette bra gives me all the support of traditional bras without using any underwires. And with mesh detailing that adds that little touch of sexy. I have it in fig and I love the color combination. I can finally be comfortable and feel a little spicy at the same time. It doesn't stop there. Honey Love makes way more than just bras. They'll keep you comfortable and looking great with shapewear, tanks, and leggings to support your style and body throughout the day. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash wizards. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off, honeylove.com slash wizards. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. When you went into your auditions, did you talk with the casting director about stuff? Because I always was very suspicious about that because the casting director- Oh, like showing them your personality? No. I mean, yeah, there's that. But what I meant was when when I would go in, Mm -hmm. the casting director say, 
this, 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 and this. And I'm like, you're saying that to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you my take. You know, I can I can take some of what, what did you say? Robert Downey Jr. was just oh, like, of like uh-huh, uh-huh, and, and do then it. do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah, I always wanted to make it my own. And, and by them giving me a certain direction, you know, sometimes I would say, how about I show you what I have and then you can tell me what's up. Yeah. But we don't have the experience of working with the casting directors. Yeah. Although my friend- um, who, who's the casting director who uh, w- got me an audition recently and I sent her the tape before it was sent in and she was like, mm. oh, let's do a little more of this or that and I yeah. and I did it again. But most people don't these days don't have that luxury and so yeah. it's literally just like sending it into the either. Right. And 99% of the time you don't hear anything. Right. So you have no gauge. And I mean, I've had auditions on tape where like it literally, I won't hear anything until they're like, so what's your avail? Which right. basically means like they're asking your availability to do right, the job. Right. So I'm like, wait, what project was that? Like, I, I don't remember well, what it is. Was that a you movie know? or something? It was a TV show. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was a TV show um, recently um, where they were asking about that. And then it disappeared again. And you're like, okay, whatever. Because I guess they sent the tapes off to whoever. But it's just so disconnected now. It's so yeah. disjointed where before you were in the room with people. But, and then when yeah. they check your availability, it means you're on avail and you means get you're, excited. Yeah, you're like, oh, maybe I have a job. job. Yeah, yeah, you're close to getting the job. Anywho. Um, okay, so meanwhile, Jerry and Max are playing football in the house and they knock over one of Teresa's lamps and we broke that lamp so <laughs> many times. That was like the running gag on the show is the lamp. Yeah. Every time I see that lamp, I always think of Lampito. Oh, yeah, lam- <laughs> Lampara. Lampara. And so Jerry says they should use go through, mo through to make the ball go through things rather than breaking the lamp again. Um, trying to make it go through the door. Um, then we're back with Alex and Alex finally makes it to the art museum uh, and then she uses the go through, mo through to get out of being there. So she shows up. She's like, hey, guys, I'm here. It makes her presence known, signs in, and then gets out. Um, she, she goes through to Harper's Jewelry Stand on Waverly Place. Um, and there comes a trash lady. She she made me laugh. She did a great job. This is like I love on our show and on most sitcoms, the actors that come in and they just hit it, knock it out of the park, and get out. Yeah. Right? Like that's their – it's a hard thing to do. It is. When and you have no background, no context, no nothing. You it's, know? it's interesting too, because I think a lot of times actors will come in and they'll try to make a meal out of it when it's yes. just a snack, you know? And, and, and that's very well said. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I am hungry, clearly. And when, when, uh, uh, when I was doing Third Rock from the Sun, I, I had a few lines here or there. Uh, and in a whole episode, I just would say two or three lines. And I was, I was, I said to Bonnie and Terry Turner, who were the the creators of the mm-hmm. show, um, and I, I was like, "Is everything working?" She's like, "David, yeah, if we're not coming up to you, it's great." Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're trying to fix this over here. Just do your thing, you know? Yeah, I, I remember that was I, I learned that um, uh, on a job that I did. I. I it was a recast. So there was like a last minute, Oh, got to hurry up, which I've actually booked a lot of jobs that way where it was like a recasting. Why don't they ever come to us first? (sighs) I've stopped trying to analyze that kind of thing, but, but it was a recast. And so it was kind of a last minute rush. A recast means somebody else had the part. And then you, and this one was Anna Anna Sophia Robb had had the part initially and then dropped out for whatever reason. Do I know who that is? Uh, she was like, and because of when Dixie, she did, um, the Carrie diaries. So she's done like a few, okay. like, like she was in bridge to Terabithia. Like, so I, I feel like people that watching the podcast, some of them would know who yeah. she is. I did this like big dramatic scene and, and nobody said anything. So it was like, and I just heard this voice and there was like a room full of people. Cause like I said, it was kind of a rush last minute thing. And they, they just go, okay, thank you. And, and that so was I the was audition. Like, that was the whole audition. That was the well, because they it was a it was audition and callback in the same day. Yeah. And that that scene was a cold read. And and I remember leaving and being like, Well, I was really happy with what I did, but I have no fucking clue what they thought because they yeah. didn't give me anything. And I found out later that they didn't have any notes, they didn't have anything to say. So and I actually booked the job walking to the parking lot. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. I love that. Jen Stone, everybody. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, it's just one of those things where it's like that whole feedback, no feedback thing is kind of bullshit. It's like, it doesn't really matter because sometimes there's no notes. I had a time. I'm just going to, my old manager represented the guy who was the lead of the show, this pilot, and I was killing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I went in and I uh, was told a different note from my manager. And I was like, 
what the fuck? So supposedly the you know writer told my manager to tell me this. I soon left my manager after this, yeah. but then I. I was like, okay, I'll take the note. What was the note? Do you remember? And it just was different. It was different yeah. from what I was doing. And I, 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 you know, sometimes you like half-ass the note, and then that's not good. And I found out that the sometimes fucking the lead guy, with you. his friend, was the one who was auditioning for it. Mm. Like they, I, I think. So was they, he like sabotaging? Yeah, I think they. Yeah. He was fucking pushing me out. I, I had which an, didn't make sense. I had an agent once do that with me. He had two people at the end for a show. Um, we were both going to network to, against each other, so it was a win-win for him, but not for us. Her quota, which means the 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 amount of money that the she amount of was money supposed that, to be that you paid. make, basically what it is is it's a, the money you've made on a previous job or have had a previous contract where they offer that, and so your quota is you can ask for that much because your quota is this high. Yeah, it's so Disney funny. Throws that out the yeah, window. Did they fucking do. Your quota mm, doesn't Disney. mean shit, to Disney. Yeah. Um, and I don't think quotas. I, I don't. I'm not sure if quotas really mean anything anymore. They used to be really kind of sacrosanct. I've, I but. always said quote, but you're right. It's a quota. But I'm I'm. Uh, uh, thinking that only people who are super famous now are getting their probably, quotes back. Um, yeah. but but he pitched her harder and kind of diminished me because he wanted more money mm. and her quota was higher, higher. Which I was, I found that out, and I was with him for like ten years. Can we find and out what that, show this was? Or it was Desperate that? Housewives. Oh my god! Yeah, I was supposed to be Terry Hatcher's daughter. It was what me and her. The, what the fuck? Yeah, so that would have been a nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I would have never done Wizards if I was on right. Desperate Housewives. So. Exactly, and for me, um, I had auditioned for Anne Hache was doing a, a mm -hmm. sitcom. Yeah, she played my mom. Yeah, no, I rest in peace. I know, yeah. Um, and I went in to Warner Brothers, uh, I can't remember, Roth, Peter Roth was the that head of vaguely. Warner Brothers. Yeah. And I just remember, I was so fucking funny. Uh, I, I was, a, it, the sitcom was, you had a one date, one time date mm -hmm. and she got pregnant and then came back to you and was like, I'm having your baby now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then he was just. This guy was really not bright. And uh, I was so funny that the fucking head of Warner Brothers fell on the ground. He oh, fell wow. off his chair laughing. Yeah. And I didn't get the part. And but I said to so, my again, mom. there's so many variables. Yeah. and But I said to my mom, I can't believe it. And she was like, ah, you, you know, like, just let that go and, and, and move yeah. on. And then boom, the next uh, week I booked Wizards. And nobody knows what the hell that show is. It didn't, it, it was made, and I think they I'm did sure. like six episodes or something. Yeah. Do you, if you don't get, not the uh, Desperate Housewives, but if you don't get a part or something, do you go and, and watch that or, or see that? Or, or It depends on what it is. Yeah. It depends on what it is. If it's something that I had like an emotional connection to, which I don't do so much anymore because I know how like painful that process can be, getting mm -hmm. connected to something that, again, there are so many variables that have nothing to do with you about whether you book something or not. Um. I, I, oh yeah, I'll watch it if it's not something that I'm like, oh, I wonder how, usually it's if I wonder how they're going to do something. Yeah. Like if I'm curious about like a technical thing or a casting thing, or I just am curious about what choice they made, I'll watch yeah. it. Otherwise, a lot of the stuff that like I get seen for is not my kind of, like, to be honest, I don't think there's anything on my resume that I, if I weren't in it, I would have watched yeah. of my own volition. You know what I mean? There were two things. Yes, I do. There's two things that I auditioned for recently ish. The, the offer where mm -hmm. it was uh, Puzo. And mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck? What, I, what is this? I'm never going to do this. And I was like, I don't look like him. And I went in the bathroom and I did some yeah. stuff and I was like, holy shit, I look like him. So, and then they checked my availability. Great. So you're like, oh, I might get this. And then I didn't. And Man. then that is where I'm like, I want to watch it. And the guy who did it was great. And that's See, a fucking it, awesome it's a curiosity series. thing. It's a curiosity yeah. thing of like, oh, I wonder where they went with that. Right. You and know? then Brie Larson is the, uh, more, uh, the woman who's the superhero. That's everyone these days. <laughs> that is all the women and the men. Wait, Bri, but it doesn't she play Captain, yeah, Captain Marvel? Yes, yeah. okay. So she has a show right now. Yeah. And I auditioned and was put on a veil, but didn't get it. And it's really hard because I had to do a rape scene. Mm. And that is like, oh my God, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Now I got put on a veil for that as well. And I didn't get it. And I was like, hmm, maybe they don't want Jerry Russo to Probably be not. doing that. Yeah. But the guy who, I watched it recently. And the guy who did it was great.
but he was very like he probably was of, different. He looked totally different. He was he was like yeah. kind of science nerdy guy kind of thing. But doing a rape scene is very difficult, you know. And and it was yeah. He did a good job. Yeah, it, it, it's. Yeah, it is difficult for a lot of reasons, but um, but on a different <laughs> note, um, I, I think a lot about that of like the the Jerry in the pilot versus you. Oh, the the, the both, actor. Both who are is good actors. The, yeah, both are are good. They make good choices, strong choices. They're just different. And you know, I did an episode of The Mentalist with. Yes, him. you've mentioned this several times. I know, but it just it's, it's, it just sticks in my brain. But it, okay. but it's also too like I, I had an acting coach, and then we're getting back to the episode. I promise. Um, but I had an uh, acting coach once who said, "Look, it's like you're shopping for chairs." She goes, "All the chairs are good. They all serve their their purpose. It's just." What one goes with your table? Yeah, you know I, the. the I was like, that's a really good point. Show that a weird I did metaphor, but the lead on Seattle Emergency, I played the lead, and then they brought in chemistry reads with my partner, mm -hmm. and they were all oh, awesome. Yeah. They were so great. Yeah. And the head of the WB, after they all left, he was like, uh, "Do paramedics wear hats? Because one of them was bald." Mm -hmm. And they were like, "No," and he was like. Oh, okay. Now I did. Victor Williams was was the actor who did it. Who was on King of Queens? Um, but we had like a moment. There was like a mess up, or we had like a yeah. chemistry well, thing. Some that of the was best great. stuff comes from that. Yes, but all three of the actors that were there were great. Yeah, they all were very talented. But by that, by that it, point, at the end it, of that, it, you can everyone can do the job. Yeah, exactly. Once that's you get I'm, to the well, but that's why like your barometer is if you got callbacks or not. Because if that if you're getting called back, you're doing something right, and then it's out of your control. It has nothing to do with you. If you're not getting called back, maybe it's something you're doing. Right, and I saw this interview with Robert De Niro uh, uh, recently, and he was like, "You go in there and do the best job you can. You do it, and and if you're if you're doing your thing, but you're not right for it, you know the." the casting person or whoever you're reading yeah. for might cast you down down the road sure. and i was like that's robert de niro saying that yeah, you know I mean, it's so I, intense i look at it as as is this is i get to act today that's it yeah. that's all the stock i put into it right after all the years of like and i still see actors that have been doing it for as long as i have and some longer where they get so invested in, oh well if i get this job then i'll have to go to vancouver and i'll have to do this and i i don't know if i i, I can't make any plans for and i'm like why are you adjusting your life around this thing that like is just an audition like yeah. just go in you get to act today it's a good fucking day move yeah, on yeah it's interesting and i i recently watched um brian cranston say that and michael yeah. keaton they both were like when i realized that was my job yeah. The, the, Auditioning. the audition was my job, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm, then you do your and job. And if you get you to go. actually film it, it's gravy, right, you know? Right. Um, okay. Back to the episode, <laughs> the actor's round table with two people here. Um, so meanwhile, uh, Alex is with Harper. They have a stand, the trash lady. Mm -hmm. That's where we even started. Right, with right. This whole, like, she did a great job. Um, cause she comes in and she's like, Hey, look, this is, hey, look, we're in a jewelry store. You didn't even, like, it was so, it was so good. Like, it was such a great, again, come in, execute, and get out. Yeah. Don't make a meal out of a snack. Right. I love the way that you worded that. Justin's back at the museum. He's handing out worksheets to be filled in and completed at the museum, and he can't find Alex to give her one. So, at the end of the museum trip, Alex pops back in because she wants to pretend like, oh, yeah, I was here the whole time. Finds out there was a worksheet and has an oh, shit moment. Um... And Justin tells her, tells her that the museum closes in five minutes. So she's got five minutes to finish this worksheet. And she doesn't know shit about shit about these paintings. <laughs> um, so she has to hurry. She gets the idea to use the picture animation spell, which Jerry, I don't think we ever see Jerry teaching that one. They just know it. Yeah, I think it just happened like from a prior lesson. Or yeah, something. that we yeah. didn't see. Frames of figures step out of your pictures to animate the artworks to help her fill out the worksheet. Which was Scream, mm -hmm. Mona Lisa, yep. Little Blue Boy, the, yeah, I think Little Boy Blue, yeah. and then uh, Van Gogh's Self Portrait. Right. Yeah. He sounded weird. He, I mean, he, his, I don't think he was trying to be Dutch, yeah. but maybe we can say it's like, oh, he's Dutch. Oh God, I don't you know, know. You know what'd have been really funny hmm. if we said something and he goes, "What? Huh?" Oh, that would have been funny. Oh, it's a missed opportunity. <laughs> Though I do have to say, I loved because I'm a big Edward Munch fan. I'm like an art history nerd. Um, so for the scream, I love that he, they did the whole thing, like him screaming every five seconds mm -hmm. and then he it? found out his shoes were too tight and that's why he was screaming. <laughs> like, it's just silly, but like, I, I just, I don't know why that brought me that a lot very of joy. Clever. There's something about that painting that is a misconcept kind of thing. There's something I got to look it up, but, um, I, I saw something about like, you know, 
you're you're thinking about this, but it really means oh, like that. it's like a Rorschach test kind of thing. Mm. Of like it's sort of like a, um, but I feel like most paintings are like that, yeah, where it's the, kind of. I don't remember. I'm sorry I brought it up because I don't remember exactly. <laughs> but did, have you been? Did you have you seen the Mona Lisa in person? Yes, no? yeah. very underwhelming. It's so interesting. I said the stupidest thing to my daughter because I we went to uh, yeah. England and to Paris, and mm -hmm. I love that I'm going to tell this story. And we went to the to the Louvre. You know, you yeah. could you could go to that museum for a week mm -hmm. and not see all the art. You know, but there's some paintings in there that are just amazing and huge. You know, like the size of a building and just yeah. the detail and yeah. everything. And I said the stupidest thing. She was not into it. She was like, "Okay, it's the Mona Lisa." Like, well, you know, how old like, was she at the time? Fourteen. Okay, you're not into anything when you're fourteen, yeah. other than like two things. Yeah, at yeah. the Mona Lisa, there's always a, a very thick crowd of people that kind yeah. of just push forward, yeah. push forward to get there. So I was like, "Let's push forward, let's push, let's get in there." And I'm like, you know, trying to get in there, and I'm super close, and then I, I'm about to be there, and, and Dylan's way back over there. I'm like, "Fuck it!" But so we we did get there, and we see it, and she was like, "Why is this painting so good?" And I was like. You're gonna laugh, but but I was like, well, why is Britney Spears Britney Spears? You know what I mean? Like, and he, she said, "Are you really comparing the Mona Lisa to Britney?" But I get Spears? what you're, I get what you're saying because honestly, when I when I saw it, and I, and I understand that I'm like very privileged and blessed to have even had that opportunity, but like I I was kind of angry by the fact that all these people came here and crowd this painting. And not that it's not beautiful, but again, you can spend weeks in the Louvre and there's tons of stunning paintings. Yeah. And a lot of like paintings where I'm like, I don't think people have ever seen a dog before. There's some of those Renaissance paintings so where I'm like, this dog's fucked now, up. Now the Mona Lisa is really beautiful. Because it's, because they know, they, they see it all the time. But wait, It's it, overexposed. So that's where I'm like, I get what you're yeah. saying with the Britney Spears thing is it's, there's a, there's high exposure to it. So they don't, it, it pissed me off at the time just because I have a lot of internal rage. Um, <laughs> but like it pissed me off at the time because I remember being like, you guys don't even know anything about this. You're taking a picture with it because it's something you have reference like for, like you've seen on a postcard yeah. or on the internet or on your screensaver or whatever the fuck. And it, it just felt like it was kind of bastardizing this piece of art and then also to missing all of the other beautiful works. Yeah. Yeah, people well, just wanted to take a picture with what was familiar for the gram and then move on. You right. Know? I'm going to tell this story. I was in the. We've got to get through the episode. No, I know, too. but we were in the Louvre another time. Yeah. I, I was there not with my daughter, but with my wife. And these, you know, you get recognized every once in a while or whatever. And I was walking around. The museum is huge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, there's works of the, the whatever with the arms gone, the Venus and the, this, all yeah. this wonderful art is in there. And this fucking dad came up to me. He was like, oh, there you are. He's like, come here, come here. And, and I took pictures with his kids. He's like, of all the fucking things in here, all they cared about was taking a picture with you. Oh, that should make that you feel so special. Funny. Yeah, it was I have silly. to say, like, in, I'm a big Francophile. I love Paris, and I, I just I love France. Um, the Muse d'Orsay I enjoyed so much more, probably because I'm more of an Impressionist person. Well, there like, I you love go. the impressionists. And I, it's, it's all that. So. I, I I have not since I've been with Yulia now. Mm -hmm. I, I I appreciate going to museums a lot yeah. more. Yeah, oh, that's the best. Because I never would have done that on my own. You yeah. Know? Well, and that's that's also the beautiful thing too about like being exposed to different interests with people, especially like your partner. You yeah. know. Um, but yeah, my poor family. Every vacation, I'd always drag them to whatever the art museum was um, for that town, and that's my so dad cool. and brother would be. So fucking bored. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I bored the shit out of them. So I was definitely the Justin in that scenario, being very into like the art pieces yeah. and knowing the history and all that kind of thing. So Alex has pulled all of the paintings out of um, their pictures so that she can fill out this worksheet with the five minutes that she has left. Um, Mona Lisa tries to escape. Alex and them says that she'll send them back to their portraits, and Mona Lisa freaks out because she realizes, you know, uh, Nobody appreciates her for who she is because they're just like, why would he she he paint her and her smile sucks on whatever they said. Um, which is interesting because like there's a lot of lore about the Mona Lisa. Like the, some people say like it's a self-portrait like Leonardo da Vinci did of himself. Mm. Um, there's some people that do like side by side comparisons. Some people say that's impossible. There's a lot of like uh speculation about who it is. Mm -hmm. Um and also I think yeah. it was stolen. There was there was a, a moment where it was stolen and and it became real big news uh, yeah. about that. I mean, talking I'm talking a long time yeah, yeah, ago. Yeah. 
Um, because I watched like a documentary thing on, on, on and, and it enhanced the want because it disappeared and then reappeared again. Yeah. Cause it, it's, it's the desire of something that's fleeting, mm -hmm. right? It's like that, that scarcity complex, right? Um, anywho, um, then, so Mona Lisa's trying to escape and we hear this also familiar voice of the amazing Amanda Tepe. Stop so about, good. Talk about coming in, executing and getting out. She is our resident, you know, um, Girk barn, Jack of all trades, can't keep the, a job. At the dog show. Yeah. Um, the, at the, um, a tea party. Yep. Yep, the flour to flour to flour to flour. Yeah, and there's so I think she did like seven episodes. Yeah, right? she did a ton between the first and the second season. But this one, she comes in. You can, I mean, I heard her immediately, and it was just like, oh, Amanda. Um, but she comes in as this just like wacky security guard who's the like hair. Jump, yeah, yeah the hair good. is huge. I think they stole Riley's wig from the spring <laughs> fling, put it on her. Um, and then uh, she's like jumping around with st like, and she has this line that just made me giggle, where it was just like their eyes really do follow you yeah. or like whatever her voice was that she, cause she'd kind of change up the voices a little bit with each character. Yeah. Um, but God, she just brings me joy every time she's on our, on our show. So Jerry and Max back at the, uh, apartment, they're playing football again. Jerry throws it through the ceiling and the ball goes in the soup that Teresa is making. And then right. they have to eat football flavored soup, <laughs> seasoned soup. Um, it was good too. It was funny. I thought, uh, uh, the the bit between Maria and and Jake and myself with the soup, I thought yeah. was very funny. But there was a lot of mouthing to him stuff, you know. And I I, I just saw my face like light up, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs> but then then they accidentally put it on Teresa the go through mo through because again it was on the soup right and so she ends up going through the island and is very okay with it immediately it's like oh this is fun and like just doesn't get mad doesn't anything just like completely embraces it yeah you would think that she would but yeah it, but she gets maybe we're mad running out of time in the episode when it we uh, yeah but she gets mad when it goes away because she's trying to show that yeah we'll get there okay. um so justin comes by um sees harper's jewelry jewelry stand because he's looking for alex um, they've kind of like ships in the night between the museum and Harper gives Justin a ring that she made from a peach pit because she thinks he's just peachy. Alex calls, I know Alex calls Justin to say she's locked in the museum and Justin conveniently repeats everything that she's saying on the phone um, in front of Harper. So she knows exactly where they are. Right. Which is, it's helpful. It's yeah. It's very great for exposition. Um, so Justin uh, then goes back into the locked museums. He tells Elaine, who's the security guard that Amanda Tepe plays, that he's forgotten his jacket. Um, and she's like, well, you got five minutes. Otherwise, no jacket, basically. <laughs> um, or, or sweater. And then he, when he arrives, he asks, Alex asks Justin to send Mona Lisa and the others back because they're not going back. And she doesn't know. Because, again, you have to know what time frame and where they were. And she doesn't. Right. Right. So, um but Justin says that she has to do it herself or she won't learn anything. Oh, Justin. Oh, Justin. Um, did you also notice that he went with Elaine, the security guard, he kept calling her sir. He's like, okay, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever, sir. Like Rather than saying ma'am. I, I, I wonder if that was a joke that fell flat. You know what I mean? Like it just didn't hit. Yeah. Um, cause sometimes like we would try stuff and it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't usually make it to the end, but it was just something that I just remember being like, yeah, that just didn't land. Yeah. I guess it was it, a weird, if you just, don't like, see it on the day while you're doing it. You can't take it out. But yeah. You yeah. should have, I mean, technically you should have said ma'am, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause or I mean, her name's Elaine. Yeah. Her name's Elaine. Like, I mean, I, I don't know, but like it, it just was, it was a weird detail that I was like, that doesn't hit. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Anyway, Harper turns up. Because Justin repeated everything, of course, <laughs> exposition. Um, and then uh, she gets introduced to Mona Lisa and uh, who she loves. She looks very familiar. Looks very familiar. Uh, but Harper just right over her head because doesn't fit the story yet. Um, and so Mona Lisa loves Harper's necklace. And so she tries to sell it to her. Um, cause it, and Alex gives it to her and tells her that it matches her smile. She feels all good about herself and then is willing to go back to the painting Justin sees that now the painting is the Mona Lisa with this $35 <laughs> necklace <laughs> is very upset um, that she's ruined a $40 million painting, which I looked it up. How much do you think the Mona Lisa is worth? Well, in there, do we say no, it's in 40 million in real? Yeah, because we say it's priceless. 
Yes, but like if you had to put a number, everything's got a number in this world. Come on. A uh, hundred million. Nine hundred million dollars. Jesus, I was close. <laughs> you were eight hundred nine- million dollars oh. off. <laughs> or no, no, excuse me. It's worth nine hundred and seventy million dollars. So I How guess. How the fuck do you price that? That's so weird. You know, there's some art person that that puts a number on right. it, like like Sotheby's or something. Um, uh, but yeah, so by our wizard's logic, it would be worth nine hundred and seventy million and thirty five dollars. <laughs> Right. So then Alex apologizes to Justin. I feel like a lot of these episodes end up with Alex apologizing to Justin or them having this kind of heart to heart moment. Yeah. This one's no exception. Complaining that he knows everything but refuses to admit um, that he does know everything. Because she says, you know everything and whatever. I'm sorry. And he's like, will you say that to my friends at school tomorrow? And she's like, no. <laughs> no. Not at all. And then we're to our tag, which you were talking about with Maria. Right, where we're in the living room. Where you're in the living room, you're th- and Maria's in on the gag now with the go through, mo through. And she is like, watch this. And she tries to go through the door. And I guess we learn that there's just a time limit on go through, mo through, because she smacks her head yeah, on I, door. Do they? Say, do we say that? I, yeah, I can't remember. It, it literally, we just, I, I think Max has a line where he's like, oh, I guess we know how long that lasts now. Uh, so like they've been, I guess, playing around back at the the apartment. Which is so odd that a spell like just a dissipates. Limit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it just like runs out of juice. Uh, we used to do that a lot. The the fake run into something or what you know. Yeah. Th- there was a time my dad. You was, taught me how to do that on there set. There you go. Yeah. yeah. When I, there was like some kind of like, I mean, you taught me all sorts of like physical comedy prat fall stuff and like how to fake. I really run into. I love. I You're love good doing at it. that. Yeah. You're and good at and it. I just remember like uh, I wanted. I wanted to like go and help Maria or whatever. And well, it was smart that you just let it be. Because <laughs> I mean, Maria knows her stuff. She's good at physical comedy. Oh, I have to admit something. When Maria did our, this podcast. With she, this one that we're doing this right now? podcast, she kept looking at the camera and talking to the camera as opposed to talking to us. Yeah, in person it was a little awkward. And it worked. It it, really, no, it totally worked. Yeah, but this is why I was you, wrong. This is why you just don't question Maria. You don't get in the way. <laughs> you just let her do her thing. She knows her stuff. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. You just let her do it. Have because some seen? of the stuff that you're like, what is she doing? That's so weird. And then you see the final thing and you're like, oh, she knows like that's what she was doing. It makes yeah. all makes sense. Yeah, I just watched her daughter did a video yeah did you see that yeah it was so yeah good. bridge did like this great like it's like her first music video she's like releasing music now it's amazing and it's really cute because maria's been doing um like alex and Teresa lines with her yeah i saw that i reposted that it was so cute it's really cute really cute uh, it was like the heartfelt moment that like Teresa has with alex when she first like mason like cheats on her or something right. just very very sweet so the spell this week frames of figures as Frames of figures step out of your pictures. God bless you. <laughs> um, what picture or work of art would you bring to life? <sighs> My dad and mom. I want them Aww. to come back. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take you to that place. Whatever, Jen Stone. No, what picture would I want to come back? Yeah, I meant like a work of art. <laughs> I know. That's well, why like, I didn't think it was going to be, you know. I mean, but that's fair. Um, that works. Because they brought Babe Ruth back. I'm trying to think of something that I love that I that I want to. What's come like to- a piece of what's a piece of art that when you because I, I, even if you're not an art person, I feel like everybody has some kind of piece that just hits them somehow. How about this? A painting of John F. Kennedy, so he can come out and tell me what the fuck happened. You love a conspiracy theory. I do. You do really love a conspiracy theory. Uh, while you're going to answer, I'll yeah. be thinking of a better art piece to say. But what <laughs> is your art piece that you would like to, um, to come out? I mean, I'm sure I have a better answer than this, but I'm thinking of like what art pieces I had an emotional response to. There's one and I'm going to, I'm going to not remember the name of it, of course, because I'm on the spot, but I think it's a John Singer Sargent painting and it's, it's cu- this couple and they're, um, it was during the Rococo period and it, and it's, they're cu- it's starting to rain and they're running from the rain. Um, and that painting, I don't, I saw it at the MoMA or maybe it was the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And I don't, I was there by myself cause I love going to museums by myself. Cause that's cool. You know, I'm going to die alone. <laughs> oh, um, so I better get used to it. Um, but, uh, I remember just being there by myself and just being, cause it's huge. And I just remember being so overwhelmed by it and it was so innocent and sweet and it, and it was such a 
captured moment that I like I got emotional like yeah. looking at it and I don't know what it was that resonated with me and that's what I love about art is like it, especially paintings it's like something sometimes it just hits like reminds you of a certain moment or yeah. like brings you back to something and and that one did it for me I know I know what it is now that there was a, a painting in uh we were in Naples mm -hmm. and there was a, a museum there and there was a lot of you know because that's where um What's the where the you know <sighs> balls? What is the name? <laughs> it's where the balls are. No, uh, um, Crazy the old city that was buried by the volcano and then oh, they Pompeii. Take Pompeii, right? Mm -hmm. There was a painting of of that era. And, oh, cool! And in, in in Pompeii, they had like they would heat the water and they would put it mm -hmm. into the steam. Just this this old painting of. Uh, you know what it was like there at that time. Mm. I want that to come to life. I want to walk around and, have and you be in seen, Pompeii. Have you seen with the the artifacts that they've found from Pompeii? Not to mention like the the the, the people. The people. Right. I mean, that's the, the, there was one amazing one. It was very sad, but it was like a dog and like its last that obviously got you know um, covered. But but more so of like touching on what you were saying, just the way of life. Yeah. Like that's something. Like my brother's like a big like. He, he's a high school history teacher. So like he's fascinated by like the moments in history that change time. Um, I'm more fascinated in like the day-to-day -day life of history yeah. and like how people live. And and there's like literally pieces of bread that look like they're just have soot on them, which I'm sure if you touch, they would just disintegrate. But like from Pompeii where it's like pieces of bread or like pieces of food or like a bar that they've uncovered, like just incredible like frozen in time day-to-day yeah. -day things it's fascinating i love yeah. that and then in greece on the, the island of santorini there's a place called agratiti agratiti i think and bless you god bless you thank you <laughs> and it is so fucking cool because yeah. it's it's in like a it's like as big as a football stadium mm -hmm. and it's covered and you can walk around you can actually walk through the ruins too oh, cool. and they had like two stories there's mosaics on yeah. there this particular place was uh, when the volcano erupted in Santorini. Mm. I think they knew because there was no metal stuff. They had taken all the metal with them. Like and there were like, no people. Yeah. They they kind they were they had time. They were like, "Hey, Bob, did you feel that shake? Yeah, let's get out let's of get here." Out of here. <laughs> you know, Bob the Greek. But I just and you know we were talking about this earlier or another uh, episode where yeah. where it's like. How often do you think about Roman times? You know, <laughs> the Roman it's Empire. The the well, apparently you think about Pompeii quite a bit too. I do, I do. It's, I it's love old stuff like that. I love, you know, what what it was like to live back then, and yeah. th just it was it was very interesting. Well, I think I've asked you this question, so stop me if I already have. But like, what time period would you go back to? Like, if you could pick a time period to experience. Uh, uh. Uh, it's really hard to say that because like if you say the 40s it's like women weren't allowed to vote and this and that and there was you know but what, what, but, but, segregation yes, of course i mean but, every every time frame has their difficulty but what's what's the time period that you're like man i just love i'm to gonna see go to egyptian like. times oh because i want to know how the fuck they build that shit i love that they you are fucking egyptian but but how did they build I'm it you, i'm gonna bring you a little cellophane hat <laughs> that you're gonna wear next time um, so they can't hear your thoughts. Okay, so Rome, uh, not Roman times, but uh, uh, you know, the Egyptian times. Egyptian no, that times. would be but that you, would be a fascinating. What about time. you? Um, I, mean, I mean, other than the forties, I know, I know, I love the twenties through the forties. Um, Wait a minute, we're in the twenties again. Which twenties? This twenties. Oh, that makes me so sad. <laughs> also, too, like the vintage clothes are decaying, and it makes me so sad. Yeah. First world problems. Sh you know, shut up, dumb white girl. But anyway. Um, Hmm, maybe not the Renaissance because I would for sure be burned as a witch. Um, but because they'd be like, who's that weird lady in the house by herself? <laughs> um, maybe. Yeah, I I'm trying to think. Um, While she's thinking, you guys tell us. Yeah, what, you guys tell what us. Time what time period would you, would you go back to? I know I take these questions way too seriously. I, well, it's hard. You want it, people are listening. You want to answer properly. You know? Yeah. Maybe maybe Victorian times. Victorian times. I think Victorian times would be interesting. Uh, women can't do shit then. But uh, isn't that interesting? Or if you go back yeah. in our history, there's not a lot of. 
Well, that's what I was thinking. Like every time I would come up, I'm like, oh, the the Elizabethan times would be interesting. But then I'm like, no. And like, yeah, everything would like I'd be murdered if I didn't bear a son. So or if I was a witch. So I'm just like that time wouldn't be great for me either. Oh, Jen. You know, yeah. Again, I take it too literal. I'm too serious. You're too funny. Well, this is the end of the first season. First season. Yeah, we did Uh, it. We got through the whole first season. And you guys Amazing. did it too. Wow. Congratulations, Congratulations everybody. You guys rewatch the well whole first done. season with us. Salut. Cheers. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers. It's goodbye in German. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod. To watch clips from the pod, go check out our Wizards Pod YouTube channel. The link is in the description. And if you want weekly bonus content, go join our Patreon. The link is in the description for that too. See you next week.